Hi everyone, so I've been seeing all these uh, trending videos um, on this whole Super Bowl fiasco with JLo and Shakira um, and all the controversy behind it. And I kind of wanted to tie it into a little bit to this kind of Kobe Bryant um, and Vanessa Bryant situation. I know it's going to seem a little weird. But um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm kind of just going to be touching on a few things. And I'm also using both of these um, topics as an example as to how Latin women are um, often targeted pretty hard in the media for different things. And of course, on social media, because this is both a trending topic in regular media and social media. Now, this, this is the bad part with me. I still have yet to watch the Super Bowl performance. I'm really not into those things. Swear to God, the last time I watched um, a Super Bowl performance was, this is how long ago it was, it was when um, Justin Timberlake and uh, Janet Jackson performed, and it's like, gonna have you naked by the end of this song, and he goes like that, and her titty pops out, and it's a big deal, oh my God, her titties on national television, that was the last time I watched a Super Bowl um a Super Bowl thing performance. I'm really just not into this stuff. I'm, you know, even like the celebrity stuff. Like I touch on these things, but I, it's just, I'll look at, I'll look into things a little bit, but I, I, I oftentimes don't really like take too much time out to like really research the stuff because I find it to be all silly. So, um, you know, you have these two women, and I, the the stuff that I've been hearing a lot of is just from all sides getting um getting hate right so they're j-lo and shakira are getting hate from um whites particularly white women um somewhat from the latin community because these are two quote-unquote whiter latinos and from the um, black american community uh, because they feel like uh there's there was just lack of representation of them so i kind of want to touch on how you know white women view whiter latinas and um lighter skin latinas and how they don't you as, as I mean I've been saying this ever since I started a channel um and I kind of it's not that I like it but at the same time I I it's like you see this is what I'm saying and then when you go and see what's actually happening and how um badly uh these women are being put down for you know basically calling them slutty and saying all that and um just you know putting them to the floor just basically just by how they were dressed in their performance and when you look at their outfits their outfits aren't even as bad however if you compare them to the dallas cowboys cheerleaders like this picture here you know these same white women aren't up in arms when these women these dallas cowboys cheerleaders are like this gee i wonder why you know um and i know what the bias is i know what it's about i you know i know that there's um there is a hint of jealousy with some of these women. You know, they try to, by all means, do things to, to make us look bad and just to, you know, make us seem like we, we're these, like, huge whores. And meanwhile, if their women do the same or, and, and oftentimes, ten times worse, it's nothing. When Taylor Swift is shaking her behind on stage, they don't say anything when she's half naked, you know? So, <clears throat> you know, I know where the double standard is with that. And then... As far as like um, with the lack of representation when it came to Afro Latinos, it's like, look, Super Bowl is kind of this Americana thing, um, and there really isn't that many Afro Latino artists. Number one, out there that are that popular. Number two, how many are known by the white community, by the white American community? Probably none, right? So, I mean, it just kind of like that doesn't make any sense to me, that argument. Um, so when I when I heard that, and I I know I heard that from Christina's video, so that, that is true. I did hear that from Christina's video. Yeah, you know, I did kind of think that that was kind of a, I don't know, I, I just didn't agree with, with that argument because, it's the, I don't know, it's the Super Bowl. And then, uh, you know, when it came down to like, um, black Americans, it's like, well, look at what they did to Colin Kaepernick. So let's say as a, as a black American artist, if you go and you perform, how is that going to look? Right? How is that going to look 
with uh, not standing with Colin Kaepernick, right? Then that's going to look bad on you because you're, anything that any black American does with regards to the Super Bowl now is going to be taken as a shot at Colin Kaepernick. And people aren't taking that into consideration, right? So, you know, I thought that that was kind of weird that, that no, like, if people were complaining about that, that's, I, I do find that strange because I think that that would, um, that would make any black artist, um, be viewed in a certain way if they if they went against that and they went and performed right whereas um Shakira and J-Lo to a degree have a a somewhat white past they don't they're still not passing enough <laughs> not passing enough to the degree that um they are being um shielded by any uh scrutiny by the white community right so that's my spiel on that okay um, you know, I know that there's a, an overall um, hatred for Latino women, um, regardless of, of whether you're light or dark, um, and uh, the whiter ones do not get preferential treatment. Um, and that just goes from everywhere, whether it's in our communities, whether it's on social media, or whether it's in regular media. And then when it comes to uh, Kobe <laughs> I'm putting this picture up first. It's kind of this is me trolling a little bit. So I put him in a Latina sandwich. You got him, his wife, and J Lo in this picture. I really like the way J Lo looks in this picture. Um, you know, she's you can even see it here. Like she's wearing makeup, but she's not wearing the amount of makeup that she usually does. And she just looks fantastic. I'm sorry. I mean, his his wife is gorgeous too. So it's like ugh. anyway. So, um, some of the arguments that I've been hearing on here have to do with, um, his will. You know, I've hear, I've been hearing people talking about his will and of course, um, slandering the wife and saying that the wife is a whore and stuff like that. And I'm still trying to figure out how this woman is a whore if they've been together since he was, uh, since, no, she was 17, right? And she ended up getting pregnant and then her dad forced her into like a shotgun wedding, basically, which to me was actually a good thing. So to me, his her father was actually looking out for her. She, he was like, no, 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 you're not going to be a baby mom. You're not going to be a single mother. You're going to get married and you're going to find a way to make this work. And you know what? He's an old school, probably Latin dude. She's Latina. So there's an old school dude. And he's like, I'm not going to let that happen. I want you to be protected and I want my, you know, my grandchild to be protected. And so you're going to marry this man. And this was, looks like it was, I'm not sure if it was prior to him being famous, but it was like, you know, the, to me, it was the father is looking out for his daughter. And I don't understand how that's a gold digger status if the father is looking out for his own daughter. That doesn't make any sense to me. And then this whole thing with the will, it's like supposedly years, several years ago, um, he, uh, he took his parents off the will, right? My thing is who the hell, if it was years ago, if it was six or seven years ago, he was 41 years old. That would have made him what? Like a 34 year old dude. How many 34 year old men think or believe in any way that they, that their parents are going to be the ones outliving them, right? We're talking about a will here. If they got, if he got into an argument with his parents, for all we know, he got upset that one time when he was in his, you know, several years ago, he got upset with them, took them off the will. If for some reason, I don't know how everybody knows this business, but whatever. He took them off the will. He never put them back on. It sounds like he didn't have a really good relationship with his family. That's what it sounds like to me. And I don't understand how it's the wife's fault that he didn't necessarily have a good relationship with his family. Some people are just not close with their parents and their siblings, and that's it. And we really don't know the dynamics of his family. We really don't know if they got along well or not, you know? And everybody is just making all of these judgments on, on the wife as, as if, you know, everything is her fault. Now, what is she going to do? What is she going to do with this money? What is she going to do? Who knows what she's going to do? Maybe she's going to wipe her ass with it. It's really none of our business. You know, maybe she's going to take those that I don't know how much billions or millions or what have you don't matter. Maybe she's just going to wipe her ass with all of it. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't affect me in, either, in any way. The only thing that upsets me is that people just use these things as a means to just put down Latin women. And, I, you know, I find it really ridiculous. 
And it's like, it's, there's no critical thinking involved at all. There's just none. Like people just have no critical thinking. And then they run with this and then they use these things and these things um, stay, you know, like they add up in their mind, like all of these different talking points that they hear from media and social media on, on Latin women. And then they're going to just use, oh, let, we need to find a way to put down Latin women now. That's really what this is about. That's really what all of this is about. When it comes to the Shakira and J-Lo stuff, when it comes down to um, Vanessa Bryant and what she's going through, that stuff. And then on top of that, they're just like basically crapping on this dude's legacy or whatever. It's like, it's such a mess. So stupid. Um, But yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I, you know, I have to say about that. Yeah, like how many guys in their 30s really believe that they're that they're gonna die before their parents to ju- to just to know to always have them on their on the will do you know what i mean i can see that being on the will in the beginning you know like maybe like oh if god forbid something happens to me but at 34 most guys are like i'm invisible i'm king of the world you know most guys think like that until they're like 45 50 years old they think they're never gonna die you know so what makes you think that he wasn't any different right um, and again, I, I do think it's more of like, he probably just wasn't, if that's all true, if this is all true, because I, in the end, like how, how do we really know these people's financial business to that degree? Cause it's all just be a bunch of BS that people are making up. Like, we don't know if this is factual like that. Right. But if let's say it was, it's like, that's also his business too. In the end, really, that's his business. That's his money. That's that's their money. Why would you not hand that over to your wife? If you're especially if you're expecting in most cases when you're marrying a woman, it's usually the husband goes first. That's usually how it is. So who's the next for the husband? It's the wife. Not the parents, it's the wife. The parents are usually gonna be dead. <laughs> Duh. I don't know. Anyway. That's it. This was one of these uh, stupid social media type gossipy type videos and I actually spent a lot longer of a period of time talking about than it about it than I wanted to all right guys I guess I'm gonna go for now and I'll see you all in the next one bye